Radiant Black, issue number 17 from Image Comics. So, as you can guess from the cover, Radiant Yellow makes his appearance. And I was like, finally. Not finally that Radiant Yellow shows up, but I mean, it is kind of nice to see him because he's the most interesting Radiant in my opinion. But just the fact that one of the big complaints I had recently was that none of the Radiants help each other. I mean, we had them meet up for the first time and then they kind of work together to fight off the Saber Dude. And they all just kind of dip out and that, that's it. I mean, there is one issue where Marshall kind of helps out Radiant Pink. But it's not even to really fight crime. It's just more like, hey, uh, I'm going to be shooting a... I'm going to be doing a stream, a live stream. And I just want you to show up. And then as, you know, Marshall shows up, then they come across a crime. So it just, it bothered me. Because it's like, these are people who just discovered special powers given to them by mysterious aliens. And as far as they know, they're the only ones with these powers. And rather than working together to try to figure out or maybe working together to fight crime or whatever, they just kind of all go their separate ways and do their own thing. And this is like, all right, <laughs> really? So it was nice to see Radiant Yellow showing up and helping out. But yeah, in the last issue, we had the Villain 5 group who haven't come up with the name yet, I don't think. I think they're the five. Some I don't know what the hell they want. This, this, the Syndicate spelled with the five. The five, the five a kid. I, they're a group that we're supposed to be taking seriously, but I just can't because we've, they've been portrayed as annoying, goofy, dumb villains for too long. It'd be like if DC all of a sudden started writing Kite Man as the next Dark Side or something. <laughs> like, it's like this character has just been portrayed as goofs and jokes for so long that trying to make them serious and threatening just doesn't work for me. But anyways, they uh, attacked the school. They were specifically attacking Marshall, and they beat him to the point where he's now dying. And the cliffhanger in that issue is that Nathan becomes ready and black once again. And so uh, we start off this issue a couple of minutes before uh, the cliffhanger in the previous issue, where we have Marsh Nathan, and he's walking back home. When the car pulls up, and it's radiant yellow and radiant yellow is like hop in you don't you don't need to do this alone and nathan's kind of like who are you I, I don't know who you are and i'm just like can you not see him wearing the radiant yellow suit like i know you never met him but he's wearing a radiant suit <laughs> you might think oh who is this guy well he's a radiant um but yeah, he, he's like, uh, he says, my name is Wendell. I'm the yellow one. I'm here for Radiant Black. And then Nathan's like, you mean Marshall? And Wendell's like, oh, I see it must be early. And then that's when uh, Nathan gets contacted. He's like, we only have 13 minutes. Um, so we got to cut to the chase, get in the car. Let's go. And um, Nathan questions him. He's like, how did you know about me not doing this alone and being the Radiant stuff? He's like, uh, because he just told me, pass me the hammer. This is going to play later on. And then he gives like a basically like a metaphor, but he can kind of predict the future a bit. He sees patterns, he sees probabilities, and he's able to piece them together and kind of work backwards from there and kind of see, okay, this is what's going to happen. At least that's what they say in the conversation. But then later on, we have just randomness happens. And it's like, there's actually no way you would be able to probability or see patterns of that happening unless you caught a glimpse of the future so it's weird i don't know if he exactly sees the future or if he just sees patterns and he puts them together and he guesses what the future is going to be i'm guessing it's going to be that he actually sees the future even though he explains that he just sees probabilities but uh yeah they show up at the school nathan puts on the uh, radiant power meanwhile radiant yellow he does like some weird things where he like he he's like oh he, he moves the car a little bit closer he grabs a hammer he grabs a, a whoopee cushion and you're like what the hell is he doing with these stuff so nathan shows up he fights villains i'm just gonna skip most of the fight it's it's okay but it's just I, again i can't take these guys seriously especially like when you see them and they're they're chasing nathan on uh, i don't even know how, how to describe their they're they're not segways they're worse than segways. Actually, yeah, they just look really goofy. They're like goofy segways. And they even, you know, say, here comes hashtag the five, baby. So it's like, oh, man, basically you just got social media influencers as your villains. That's lame. Um, but 
the villain is basically saying how they're going to kill Marshall. Like, you know, it doesn't matter if he's dead. We're going to find, we're, we're going to dissect him. We'll find out some way to, you know, suck some of the radiant power out of him. And that's when Doppler is like, oh, you know, maybe I'm on the wrong side. It's like, no, really? What was your first clue? <laughs> so she actually ends up saving Marshall. The villains are just too goofy. Um, we literally have a scene where one of the villains, the leader, is sneaking up behind Nathan. And he's going to stab him in the from behind. He's going to stab him in the back when he steps on the whoopee cushion, which, which Nathan hears. And he's like, were you just about to? And then the villain says, backstab you? Yeah. I mean, I'm still going to kill you. And it's like, what is this? Why, why are you quipping with your murder victim? It's not like the Joker, where the Joker, you know, he, he, he has humor, quote unquote, but it's very like, just like creepy and disturbing and uncomfortable. This is just like stupid MCU quips, but rather than coming from the MCU characters, it's coming from the villains. But yeah, so Doppler decides, okay, I'm, uh, you know, she's gonna help out, uh, with, uh, with Marshall. She's gonna help, you know, switch sides and help the Radiance. We see, um, Yellow's powers coming into play, where we see, uh, Nathan getting hit and he crashes into a car and it explodes. And somehow the car crashing and blowing him up helps break his fall. I don't, I don't understand this panel. So we saw that Red and Yellow purposely moved his car a few inches forward. And it's kind of like, okay, why was he doing that? And then we see the car. We see Nathan crashing into the car and it exploding. Nathan climbing out of the wreckage. He gets hit. And then he grabs a car that looks exactly the same as the one that just blew up. And then he throws it at the mech. So I'm like, okay. The car that he threw, I'm assuming it's not the Radiant Yellow's car because that one just blew up and this one's intact. So how was a car blowing up breaking Nathan's impact when Nathan's impact would have been just fine if he had just landed on the street? In fact, it probably would have been better if he landed on the street because then he would have gone blown up. But whatever. We see later on where uh, Doppler is climbing onto a, a church tower. Or at least, no, it's a school building, but there's like the um, the giant's bell. It's like a church bell. And um, she's going to use her powers. And we're going to see in just a moment how. Um, but then Wendell, Radiant Yellow, shows up. And he basically says, uh, I'm not here to fight you. I'm here to help you. And he hands her the hammer. And what she uses is she uses the hammer to smack against the, uh, the bell to get it to ring. I'm just like, wait a second. Bells, they have the little rope that you pull. You don't need the hammer. But whatever. But the, the bell makes a loud noise. And the loud noise, I guess, takes out one of the villains. And then starts disrupting uh, Nathan. Like Nathan starts, it starts affecting his powers as well. And he powers out. Which allows the villain to come up behind him to almost stab him if it wasn't for the fact that he stepped on the whoopee cushion that Radiant Yellow left behind. But the thing I'm wondering is, how the hell does Nathan hear the whoopee cushion over the sounds of the bell? Because the bell is so loud and powerful that he hears it through his helmet and it actually shuts off his power. Like It's so long that it disrupts him from being able to keep his Radiant powers going. Yet somehow, even with this loud noise ringing in his ears, he's able to hear the villain sneaking up behind him by stepping on a whoopee cushion. How's the whoopee cushion loud enough, louder than the bell? But then, uh, yeah, uh, Marshall shows up as the Radiant Black and hits the villain. And then we find out that both of them are Radiant Black, but they can't be Radiant Black at the same time. Whenever Marshall is wearing the suit, Nathan does, doesn't have the suit. But then when Nathan has the suit, Marshall doesn't. So they take turns basically taking punches at uh, the leader and, you know, ricocheting back and forth. And they're transforming and then untransforming. Um, but I'm like, okay, this is kind of unique, especially when we have them half transform. So both, both of them are like half radiant black and then just half their regular civilian self. 
as they punch uh, the villain. Um, so I'm like, okay, that's kind of unique. I'm kind of interested to see where this is going. Because now instead of two people having radiant black powers, it's basically one radiant black that's being shared between two people. So they have to switch back and forth between who's who uses the power or not. I'm like, all right, I'm 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 intrigued. This is something new. I'm interested. You have my attention. Let's see where this goes. So I like that. As for the rest of the villains, they tried to make their escape in a truck, but they're not able to go far because Radiant Yellow uh, put sugar in their gas tank. So earlier when we saw Radiant Yellow pulling out like different items, like the whoopee cushion, the hammer, the packet of sugar, that's why like, we saw what he did with the hammer. We saw what he did with the whoopee cushion. As for the sugar, he put it in the gas tank. So now the villains aren't going to be able to get far and they're going to get caught by the, the cops. But um, as I was saying before, I'm, I'm sorry, I, my ramblings are kind of over the place. I don't script anything. And I know like, you know, it might be better if I script my videos, but I'm, I'm trying. The reason I started YouTube is one, to socialize and two, to work on my speech. If anyone doesn't know, I, I have speech issues. I stutter, I ramble. Um, I had a speech impen uh, impediment. I can't even pronounce the word, which leads me to my next thing. I have trouble pronouncing certain words. Uh, English is not my first language. So, uh, and I learned English from two people who themselves learned it, learned it as a second language. My parents, English is their second language, and I learned English from them. So I, I butcher pronunciations a lot. I, st I stumble over my words. I over-describe things. I stutter. Um, and the reason why I do my videos off the cuff is to practice talking off the cuff it's to practice um you know if I, because if i'm just reading stuff it doesn't help my speech but if i'm talking without you know and i'm just talking off the fly then um over time i can hopefully start condensing my words start not rambling so much being able to pronounce things without having to, to read them or see them into words first but uh yeah what i was trying to say earlier on is that radiant yellow's power doesn't seem like um uh, a predictable you know seeing patterns and stuff because how was he able to predict that this guy was going to step onto a whoopee cushion there's no pattern for that there's no pattern of him stepping on the whoopee cushion how did he know that the villains were going to take this certain truck to make their getaway how did he know that doppler was going to use the church bell to amplify her powers and that she would need a hammer how did he know that there wasn't already a rope there for her to use or some other tool for her to use to ring the bell? How did he know that Nathan was going to crash at that specific spot and needed his car to break his fall, I guess? I, I still don't know how exploding into a car somehow breaks your fall and is better than impacting the ground, but whatever. Um, how does he know all this? He can't guess these by patterns. So his explanation doesn't make sense. Just He sees glimpses of the future. That would be the best way to... To just, you know, that, that that's how he, he sees it. Or maybe he sees, maybe it would have been better if he says, I see glimpses of multiple futures, and then I see the patterns in those futures, and then I'm able to predict which one is going to happen here. Because some futures, some events don't happen, but certain events do happen, and those events happen in multiple futures. So the probability of that event happening in this one is more likely because it happens in more often than not if he had it explaining like that that would have made a lot of sense but he doesn't he just explains oh it's just like patterns and stuff i just i see patterns and then i'm able to guess what's going to happen it's like no you you see glimpses of the future and i'm assuming you see multiple universes maybe and then you're able to guess what's going to happen by combining and looking at what's the the pattern and all those glimpses but yeah, I'm kind of going off topic on that. Uh, I guess I just would have liked it explained better. But yeah, I'm going to stop it here before I ramble even more. <laughs> I will say it was an interesting issue. I didn't hate it. I'm interested in where they're going with the uh, the sharing the powers. I think that's pretty cool and unique and um, leaves a lot of, you know, I mean, there's a lot of directions that can go with that. So I'm intrigued with that. I still wish that there were better villains. I don't, I don't like the, the five. I don't, I can't take them seriously. They were jokes for so long that I just, I can't not see them as not jokes. And also like, I'm supposed to be scared of social media influencers. Like they're YouTube influencers. 
why the hell would I be scared of him? You know, I don't know. I I, I hope there's a, a better villain soon. It's very weird because Kyle Higgins, like, apparently he did really good with Power Rangers. People seem to love that series. And I've read, like, the first six issues of Volume 1, and they weren't too bad. They were pretty good. The only reason I didn't pick it up was because um, the comic book store that I was going to at the time was moving. Yeah, uh, when I found uh, another comic book store, I gave them some of the more important stuff that I wanted to put on my pull list, and that one just didn't make the cut. But, yeah, I've heard great things about Power Rangers. The Ultraman, I don't know if he did the Volume 1 and 2. He might have. If so, then, okay, I can kind of see, because those were kind of me. They are okay. Um, but Issue 1 of the... Uh, the, the latest Ultraman that I did a video for like a week or so last week um was it last no it was actually this Monday you know pretty good so it's like Kyle Higgins can can be good but then there are times where it's just like I don't see it, 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 it he's very hit or miss either he he does a good job or he's terrible and <laughs> I kind of wish he was consistent um because then I can either have a consistently good st story a, a good series or I can have a series I can just drop because it's not all that great. But yeah, th this was fine. Just give me new villains. Give me alien villains. Give me like earth destroying threats. That's what I want. It it's weird because I feel like the pacing is backwards where we have the radiant, the our characters, they get their powers. They don't, they do nothing with their powers really for like four issues. Then all of a sudden we get a world-threatening uh, villain. And then that's when he meets up all the other Radiants. And then they stop him. And then they all go their separate ways. And then we're back to school uh, street-level villains. And it's like, this should be the opposite. You should have our hero get their powers. They try to learn how to use it at first. They fight street-level villains. Then an Earth-threatening you know, threatening villain shows up. They discover that there's other Radiants, and then they band together with those Radiants to fight the Earth-threatening villains. And then once they beat one, maybe another one shows up. Um, but then they, they start working together, and they start becoming more like a Sentai Power Rangers team, where, where, where they all work together to fight giants, aliens, or like aliens or villains that can't be stopped by you know the U.S. Army or any country's army. But we're going the opposite. Like you go with the earth threatening villain first. And then after that, you go with street level villains. And this is like, I can't take these villains seriously because we just had an earth threatening villain. So why am I supposed to be worried about them taking on YouTube influencers when they literally beat a, uh, an alien that was super dangerous and had the powers to destroy earth. If he wanted to, it's like, it's like, I don't know. It's like the, the pacing is just off. And it really harms this series. But yeah, that, that's like, like I said, like an editor really should step in and be like, no, dude, you're doing this backwards. We got to go small and then build up. You don't start off huge and then go small. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm going to stop here. Um, so yeah, overall, I thought the, uh, the issue was okay. Um, if I were to grade it... C plus, yeah, C plus, B minus. Radiant Yellow is still the most interesting one in the group. I'm glad that we saw him here. His little, uh, you know, setting things up because he knew what was going to happen was pretty cool. I like that because I like how, I like also how it, it was portrayed where he's like, you know, hand, hand me the hammer. And then he doesn't explain why he has a hammer. He doesn't explain why there's a whoopee cushion in his car. Uh, he, there's no explanation for why he parks to let... Marshall out to let Nathan out and then all of a sudden he stops for a moment and then he moves the car a couple of inches forward I like how like none of this is like he doesn't explain any of this but then later on you see why he's doing all of it so it's like a nice good foreshadowing um but yeah I'm really interested to see you know what they do with that character I'm hoping they don't butcher him when they finally give him his origin story issue because that's how I feel like I feel like with pink pink was interesting and then they gave her the origin story issue and they ruined her for me like now i don't care for pink anymore right now yellow is like really cool like i'm like really intrigued by him so i'm hoping his origin story doesn't ruin that 
fingers crossed. But yeah, this this issue is it contain it, it does good things, does interesting things, then it also continues to do things that it should have fixed plenty of issues ago. So yeah, that's why it, get, it gets an average score from me. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to hear you from you. Till next time. Later. So what'd you guys think of that video? Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell for a notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far. And I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see. And I hope to see you guys next time. Later.